Hello friends, I'm Ms. Natalie from Prince George's County Memorial Library System, and welcome to today's Craft and Create Dragonfly Charms and Jewelry. In honor of our summer at your library theme this year, Tales and Tales, all about animals, we will be making a dragonfly craft. Ah, the noble dragonfly, not only a fearsome predator, but also highly decorative. Dragonflies have an iconic and easily recognizable shape with their double wings and their long bodies, so we should be able to replicate them in wire without too much trouble or repeatedly having to check anatomical diagrams. Dragonflies have been a popular motif in art throughout history and across cultures, from Japanese woodcuts to Tiffany lamps. Today, we will be making charms, bracelets, and rings. If you have ever wanted to get into making metal jewelry, you would do well to dip your toe into the water first with wire jewelry. You can get away with a much smaller and less expensive set of materials instead of all of the paraphernalia required for metal smithing. All of the saws, the sheet metal, the hammers, the flux, the blow torches, much easier to just go the wire route instead. Wire jewelry has very few requirements to get started in the hobby. One, you need some wire. Two, you need something to cut the wire, and three, you need something to bend the wire. The dragonfly shape that we are going to make today is made entirely with one line. We're going to start with a loop for the head, swirl back and forth for the wings, and then loop down for the long tail. There are a lot of reasons to love dragonflies, but today we're going to love them because they are very easy to make out of a single piece of wire. The wire and the wire cutters are necessary for anything you want to make with wire. The cutters are necessary because you will genuinely ruin any scissors you use to repeatedly cut pieces of wire. More optional are the round nose pliers. While I think you should always have them on hand for wire crafts, it's true that softer wire can be bent by hand. There are a couple of points to note there, however. Your hands are never going to be able to curl wire quite as finely as the pliers and probably not as evenly either, so it might look a little lumpy. Additionally, this can make your finger sore if you do a lot of it. If you want to try a compromise, you can use a cylindrical object in conjunction with your hands to aid the bending process, though this still won't be quite as smooth as the pliers. In today's video, I will illustrate how to use a pen to help in the process. There is one area where hand bending is definitely superior to using the pliers. And that is, if you squeeze hard with the pliers, you can end up with little indents in your wire. Your fingers are not able to produce the same amount of force in a tiny area, so they won't make those same marks. In order to get around that, some jewelry makers will put something soft around the jaws of the pliers if they're concerned about indents, like a small piece of cloth or something. I'm pretty casual about things, so I generally just reconcile myself to the idea that someone might be able to see where I was holding the wire. Typically, when you're using pliers for this, you want to use only just enough force to hold the wire securely. Wire comes in a variety of hardnesses. Jewelry making is typically only going to use wire that ranges from dead soft to hard. There is a numeric range for wire hardness that goes from 0 to 10, but the kinds of wire we use for jewelry are going to be in the 0 to 4 range. There are harder designations like extra hard and spring hard, but they're just not malleable enough to be practical for our uses. There are also halfway points between dead soft, half hard, and hard, but these are the most common. Today, I'm going to be using soft and half hard for our projects. There is a trade-off as you move from one end of the spectrum to the other. The softer a wire is, the easier it is for you to manipulate, but also the easier it is to accidentally bend or ding it in everyday use. Harder wire makes for a sturdier end product, but it's also more difficult to manipulate during the creation process. If you accidentally let go of the end of a piece of software, it's just going to lay there, waiting for you to pick it back up. If you accidentally let go of a piece of hard wire that has got some tension in it from being bent, it might swing back and poke you, which would be very sad, and that's why I use softer wires myself. Additionally, you can work hard in some wire. This is the process by which you make metal harder by manipulating it, which will occur naturally when bending it into jewelry shapes. 
This makes the metal more brittle at the same time. If you take a piece of copper wire and bend it back and forth a few times, it will become harder and harder to bend, right up until the point where it snaps instead. In a metal smithing shop, we could also make metal softer through the application of heat, but that's not something we want to try in our own homes. Now, I thought that this design for a dragonfly charm could be really nice. The swooping back and forth wing lines seem kind of classy. Alas, every time you cross over your line, that's a double thickness of wire, so the shape won't lay flat. This can be fixed by flattening the wire in those areas to be only half as thick as the rest. You can just hammer it a bit, and that usually takes care of it, but that requires a whole new set of materials that we don't want to get into today. You'd need the hammer, of course, and you'd want something reasonably anvil-like to be hammering it against. You'd probably want a clamp to hold it in place so you don't accidentally hammer your finger. And of course, you absolutely need safety goggles when you're hammering a small piece of metal just in case it goes flying. This is all way too much work for us today. And plus, it would be irresponsible of me to advise everyone to go out and buy an anvil. So we're just going to use a different design that doesn't overlap. There, that should be just fine. All right, here are the exact materials that we're going to be using today. We're going to need some wire. Now I'm using a few different kinds of wire, but you don't need a variety, you can just choose one. You're going to want it to be soft or half hard wire, and you're going to want it to be a fairly thick wire, which means a low numbered gauge. 12, 14, or 16 would all work very well for you. For the various things we do today, I'm going to be using a 12 gauge aluminum wire that is soft, a 14 gauge copper wire that is soft, and a 16 gauge copper wire that is half hard, and a 16 gauge um, silver tone copper wire that is half hard. Now, any of these could be used for any of the projects. I'm just showing a little bit of everything. When you buy tools for making wire jewelry, they often come in sets of three. A round nosed pliers, also called a rosary pliers, a pair of wire cutters, and a set of pliers that are more what you think of when you think of pliers. They're uh, called chain nose and they have little grips on them and they look more like they're for a toolbox instead of a jewelry kit, but they have their place. All we need today are the round nose pliers and the wire cutters. And I'm going to be showing you how to do some things without the round nose pliers anyway. They come in full size, which are the easiest to use, and also a smaller size, about three inches long. If you use them extensively, they'll start to dig into your hand but they are less expensive and easier to put in your pocket and take with you. I do recommend using jewelry wire for these things and not attempting to use wire that you may find around your house. In my youth, I attempted to use paper clips that I had unwound. I once tried with a hanger that I got from a dry cleaners. Don't do this. This is dangerous and you're going to poke yourself and the wire is going to be too hard to use. You're going to want to Go online or go to a craft store and buy one package of jewelry wire. All right, it's time to make our charms. We've got our wire, we've got our wire cutter, we've got our pen to bend our wire. I'm gonna start by unspooling some of this wire that I have here. This is, I think, 14 gauge aluminum wire. It's very soft. You can pull it out flat and it just stays that way. Very easy to cut with the cutters too. This is the shape that we decided on we're gonna make. Little floop for a head and then for wings and then a tail. We are going to curve in the end of the tail and the uh, little bit of wire at the head so that it's not pointy. We are going to wrap this around the end of our pen and we're going to wrap it all the way around to get kind of a 
a circle, a little loop the loop. If I'm trying with the pen in my finger to um, fold in that head, I'm going to jab myself in the finger real bad. So it's better to make it go all the way around and then trim the excess. There we go. Yep, not a bad match. Bigger, of course, since we're using a pen instead of the pliers, but it'll work. Now let's make these wings. I'm going to give him a little bit of a neck because with my fingers in the pen, I can't get quite as tight in there. Not bad, not bad. But the other three have to match. Let's see how that goes. I want it to get nice and tight up in there, so I'm just going to squeeze it if it isn't tight enough already. Alright, not bad. And it's pretty easy to do with just my fingers, so I don't have to use the pen for the whole thing. This is just a 90 degree angle at the bottom, that's no problem. Looks reasonable. We've got a tighter, um, a tighter bend on the example, so I'm going to just use this pen to see if I can make this a little bit closer. And then, of course, we're going to bend around the, uh, the last little bit of wire, and then we're going to trim it because you don't ever want to have a pointy bit of wire sticking out. That's no fun for anybody. Alright, and just got to make sure everything is nice and flat with every other part. Alright, very similar, not too bad. Had to be a little bit bigger because of the uh, diameter of the pen, but that's fine. You could hang either of those in a window and be pleased with it. Alright, so I took a look at those that we just made and I thought, those look pretty good, but what if I made it needlessly complicated? So we're going to make one that's needlessly complicated. This one is going to be in copper. You can see side by side, it's visibly thinner. This one is going to be in half hard wire instead of soft wire. The thickest wire that I've got here is this aluminum wire, which is 12 gauge. It's going to be a little bit thinner when we get to 14 gauge, and a little bit thinner than that when we get to 16 gauge. That's just how wires go. It still retains its curve a little bit, unlike the soft wire, which was willing to do anything I told it to. Still easy enough to cut, though, with the wire cutters. We can't really do this with our fingers because it's going to be a much tighter curve we need. So we're going to use the round nose pliers here. I'm going to fold the wire in half. And we're going to wrap it around the end of the pliers here. Just the ones. And then we're going to give it a couple twists. And we pull it off and you can see it's made a little loop now and it still has those two arms. There are four of these in the tail so we are going to just Right on top of the first one, make a second one. Wrap it around once, and then wrap it around itself. Once and again. It's easy for it to um, kind of veer off to the side, so you want to make sure that you're making your uh, dots all in a row. And we're just going to do that a fourth time, and then we'll be time for the wings. All right, reasonably similar. 
The wings are just going to be a nice X shape. We're going to fold it over and do the same thing on the other side. We've already made the top wings just by making that little loop. And then we're going to make similar loops on the bottom. They're going to come back up to the middle and we'll just tie it off to make sure it stays put. We're going to fold that up, try to make it the same size as the other ones we've made. If it's not perfect, that's fine. Okay, it looked a little bit complicated, but it was just folding down and then folding up again. To keep everything secure, we are going to wrap these two around themselves the same way we were doing with the tail. I'm going to straighten them out a little bit to make that easier. And then we're just going to make the same shape for the head that we did for the tail down at the bottom. We're going to wrap it once around the plier and then once around itself too. Now if we were making a butterfly or something, we'd be done. These uh, antennae would look good, but dragonflies aren't like that. So we're just going to trim them and turn them into eyes. I want it to be nice and secure. I'm just going to widen this up right here to make it a little bit tighter of a twist. Okay. We're going to curl over the ends into eyes and then we'll be done. There we go. Those beautiful compound eyes that let dragonflies see all around them. And it's a little bigger than the other one. It's a little bit of a larger wire, but that's fine. These copper ones turned out pretty nicely. But remember how I said when the wire goes back over itself, the design won't lay flat? These are never, ever going to lay perfectly flat. They are crazy lumpy. They're still kind of cute, though. All right, friends, so we've made a couple different kinds of charms. We're going to take that first nice, easy, minimalist design, and we are going to use it to make a bracelet. The reason I was so interested in making sure it was a nice, flat design is because it's going to lay atop my wrist when we're done, and I don't want it to be wonky or have bits that are higher than other bits. That'll make it more likely to catch on something. I'm going to unspool some of this wire. And I almost never measure, but I'm going to just measure this out and see, ouch, let's see, um, about two feet. It's always better to have a little bit extra instead of not quite enough. I'm going to brace it with my arm. We're going to loop over the head, and then we're going to make those four wings and the tail. Uh-oh. I held it too hard, and I got a little bit of a kink in it. Luckily, this is soft wire, and it's pretty easy to buff that right out. 
The real trick is making sure all the wings are even and making sure all of my corners are about the same size, made with about the same skill. Hmm, that last one does not look quite like the others. Let's see if we can tighten that up just a little bit. Okay, that looks about the same. And then we're going to give it a right angle to start the tail. And there we go. Instead of curling the tail in on itself like we did with the charms, this tail is going to wrap around my wrist to make it into a bracelet. We want to make sure that the dragonfly is not much larger than my wrist. Every little bit that sticks out, that's a chance it could catch on something. I'm going to wrap it all the way around my wrist and then I'm going to cut all that extra off and make a little clasp. We made a loop for the end of the dragonfly's tail, so I'm just going to make a nice little hook that can go through that. Now, theoretically, you could just take the end of the wire and fold it over once, and then you'd have a hook. The only thing with that is, it'd be a very sharp hook. We're going to make a little round folding over here, and then make the hook. Because in jewelry, you don't ever want a sharp piece of wire touching your skin. We're going to hook it through, and see how it looks. Alright, not bad, not bad. Let's try it on, see what happens. That's pretty comfortable. Maybe a slight bit bigger. Hmm, yes. Let's make a new one that's just a little bit bigger. I'm going to show you a different wire for this one. We're going to use that soft aluminum wire from the first charm that we made. Since we used a pen on the first charm, we had to make do with some larger curves, but now that we're using the pliers, we can make them pretty small, pretty tight. All right, fold up the tail, and there we go. Instead of molding this around my wrist, I'm going to take advantage of how soft this wire is and just kind of force it into a vague circle, um, a very vague circle. We're going to curve the end over onto itself so there's no sharp edges and then make a little hook. There we go. Yes, that is much larger than the last one. Oh, 
it fits right over my hand oh it doesn't want to stay decorative side up what are we going to do hmm luckily we've got a solution we're going to put a kink in the band of the bracelet here's two different kinds I've made before one with kind of a loose kink and one with a tight kink and we're just going to use our pliers to tighten this up by holding firmly bracing with our hand and spinning it well spinning implies a sort of boisterousness that we aren't bringing we're being very gentle there we go oh and even when I wiggle my wrist it's decorative side up excellent all right friends we're going to try one last craft this time we're going to make a ring with that first minimalist design I'm going to use a slightly thinner wire this is going to be 16 gauge instead of 14 gauge and here's the thing about rings it's far more important that a ring fit you correctly than a bracelet now ring sizers exist but we don't want to have to go out and buy one so we're just going to try our best and fix any mistakes that come up along the way we're going to find a nice household cylinder approximately the same circumference as a finger i found this nice water brush but you might come up with a marker or a broom handle or something else like that i'm going to brace this with my thumb and wrap the wire around a few times and then we're going to test it against the size of a finger hmm that's pretty small I think I'd rather put it on a different finger so we're going to very carefully loosen it we're going to take the coil and push the wire into it very gently so it slowly becomes bigger there now it fits this finger instead ideally I'd like to have it wrap around my finger three times so I'm going to follow the curve that we've already made and wrap just a little bit more wire around we've left this tail free and we're going to use that to secure the ring one thickness of wire is easily bent but the three thicknesses together that will be stronger and there's less of a chance that you'll ding your ring or you'll smack it up against something and flatten it this is especially important for rings because your hands are what are doing activities all day long we're going to take the tail of wire and wrap it around the three thicknesses this holds them securely together this is half hard wire and you can see I'm struggling just a little bit to be manipulating it with my fingers like that we want to wrap it around a couple times and try to make it as neat as possible when you're making rings it's a good idea to keep trying them on at every step of the process because it's easy to accidentally tighten or loosen them and it's easy for them to fall out of round it's still a pretty good fit I'm going to give them a couple tugs just to make sure they stay as round as possible there we go it still fits we do have this length of wire sticking out though and we've previously talked about not wanting sharp pieces of wire on our jewelry so we're going to trim it curve it into itself and lay it flat against the band of the ring that's about as neat as we can expect and then we're going to cover that part up with our dragonfly we're going to make the dragonfly out of the longer tail on the other side 
and we're going to use this basic design that we came up with first thing. It'll have to be smaller though. I'm trying to estimate how much of this wire we're going to need. It would be a better idea to measure it, but I so seldom measure things. Unlike previous times we've made dragonflies, this time we're going to start with the tail and end with the head. There we go, there's the tail. Time to start on the wings. They'll have to be very small wings. In order to make the wings very small indeed, I'm going to be using the um, pointy ends of the round nose pliers. You can see each half of the pliers are conical in shape. At the end, it's a smaller circle than down near where my thumb is. We're going to try to make the bend up near the top. I'm going to make a little pencil mark just so I can see and try to make them all at the same point. Now the work that we're doing right here, you really need the round nose pliers to do. It's almost impossible to do this with your hands, especially with the half hard wire. Hmm. I don't know if I like that wing. I'm going to unbend it very gently and then try again. I want to push the wings to lay flat across the top of the ring. And I want the dragonfly as a whole to follow the curve. I'm giving each of the wings a squeeze to make the wings as thin as they can be. We're going to cut off the excess and curl the last little bit over to be the head. All right, not bad, not bad. This was not the only dragonfly ring that I made today. I'm afraid I went on a little bit of a spree. Here are some different styles I came up with. Here's another copper one, but with much larger wings this time. Here's a more angular one in silver. Here's one that is objectively too large to be on top of a ring. And this one is a little beaded charm that hangs down. Once I had that idea, I decided, why not thread beads onto the wire itself and wrap it around the ring that way? And of course, if a ring ends up being too large, we can tighten it up the same way that we did with a bracelet. All right, so we tried several different things today, explored different designs, tried new techniques. You don't have to copy what I did today. Be sure to put your own flair on things and feel free to experiment. When you buy a spool of wire, depending on the gauge, you can get several yards. So feel free to just try whatever comes into your head. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Everything is an opportunity to learn. Flex a new muscle. Thank you so much for coming to today's Craft and Create, and I hope that you found some information that will help you bring your own creativity to life. If you enjoy videos about making things, may I suggest the Creative Bug service on our website, on our online resources page. 
they have more than 1,700 videos on a variety of topics brought to you by more than 150 instructors, so you're going to find plenty to keep you creative.